A goal without a plan is just a wish. And I want to make sure your business is not just a wish, but a reality. And that's what we're going to talk about today is actually making it a reality. Your execution strategy is that plan. That's how it all kind of comes together. It's the nuts and bolts of launching your business. And that's what we're going to talk about. Not just launching your business, but actually running your business as well. So I want to make sure that we answer this question. How are we going to get this business up and running? The answer to that question is your execution strategy. This is, and it's very important that we understand kind of what level we need our execution strategy to be at. It's a pretty high level look at how you're going to execute, not necessarily all the individual steps that you need. I actually like to think about the difference between an execution strategy, which is more high level, and an execution plan, which is really more of the, the, the detail, step-by-step -step things that you need to do. So you can kind of separate and put those into two different buckets. What steps are needed to bring your product or service to market? Very important. How are you going to gain momentum towards viability? What is your timeline to make all this happen? Who are you going to get to do this? Who are you going to get to help you do this? And how are you going to measure the progress and the results? And these are all the different elements that start to make up what we call an execution strategy. Now, I want you to know that execution strategy is somewhat customized to each individual business. As you begin to write and work with your business plan, that there are some standard elements that I want to make sure we include. And we're going to go through those in detail. And then there's kind of some optional elements, depending on your business, that we may include or may not include. And that's, that's absolutely your choice in terms of do this. So, I kind of think of putting this together a little bit like some puzzle pieces that maybe not every element applies, but I do want you to evaluate the top five elements that I want to make sure uh, that you include here. What we're trying to do is create a complete story about how you're going to execute this business. That's what we want to tell. We want to tell a story, a compelling story, and stitch all these different pieces that I'm going to go through in just a moment together into one cohesive plan. There's a few things I want you to keep in mind as you're building out your execution strategy. First thing is your time frames. Your time frame actually may vary. So it depends on how long should your execution plan cover. Should it be three months, six months, two years, five years? Well, it really depends on your business in terms of how far you take that out. Let's take a couple of examples here. Let's take a technology business. You know, technology moves very, very quickly. So if I was running a, a mobile app business, as an example, I probably would take my execution plan out maybe uh, 18 months or so. I wouldn't go much further because technology is changing. The markets are changing. It's very dynamic. How about another example, which is a little bit more of a traditional business, a winery? So first thing is, is that wineries require significant capital investment and about two years before you get your first harvest. And then you have to age the wine, which can take another five to seven years before you actually start earning revenue. So this can be a long term. So your execution strategy might actually have to go out nine or 10 years, believe it or not, in big, more big chunks, big, more bigger milestones to actually make this thing work. Determine the right level of detail. This is not a tactical document. This is not meant to be a step-by-step -step analysis of exactly every detail of the business. The trick is you've got to create a balance. And so you want to keep your execution strategy fairly high level so investors look at it and say, yeah, this, this entrepreneur really understands what it takes to, uh, to, to execute this business. You want to make sure you have significant milestones embedded in there so they can actually track your progress. Those are the things that they want to know. What they don't want to know is every little detail it takes. That would blow them away. You might want to write a plan, an operational plan or even an execution plan with a lot of detail in, but not something that you might share with investors or other people looking at your business. That's kind of important as well uh, for you to understand. Now, I want you to also consider that pre-revenue businesses, businesses, depending on what stage of business you're in, depends the, uh, determines the level of detail that you need to be at. So in startup businesses, again, we're going to keep the execution strategy fairly high level. With a post-revenue business or a business that is actually going and making revenue and has their product that you might actually need a little bit more detail in your execution strategy if you're going for a second or third round of funding because they're going to want to know more details about how you're going to execute the next phase of your business as well. So again, it, it also matters where you are in terms of your business cycle in terms of how much detail you want. But remember, be balanced on this. Let's start by looking at what I call the required components. And the required components really are those components that I want to make sure that are in your execution strategy. Then, in addition, there are some optional components that you can kind of put together. So let's get started with the first one. The first one we have is milestones, right? Milestones, really important. These are the key actions or events in order to get your company launched. What are those key milestones to get your company launched and then moving forward in an operational sense going forward? And that's what we want to, that's what we want to really get down. Now, milestones typically have specific dates associated with them or date ranges associated with them. That's a very important component to have a milestone. You can't just put something out there and say, like put a goal out there and say, oh, I don't know when it's going to get done because it really isn't then a milestone. I want to make sure I clarify one thing. There's a difference between a milestone and a product roadmap. And some people get these mixed up. 
product roadmap is just looking at your product. Now, there are milestones in your product roadmap, but really a milestone in what we're talking about as it relates to execution strategies about company-wide events that need to occur, including your product development, but not just your product development. It's a list of those initiatives. And I like to think of the initiative as the thing that you need to do in order to get to the milestone. So I always like to put down initiatives. I think they, they're very important because they drive you. That's kind of your goal. That, what do I want to achieve? What do I have to achieve? And the milestone is the actual achievement of that. So the initiative propels you to actually achieve the milestone. That's what milestones are all about. The next required component is staffing plan. Now the staffing plan is actually a little different than your company overview where you actually went through your executive team. The staffing plan is actually gonna say, what is all the staff that I need in my business over the next six months, 12 months, two years, or even further than that. Now staffing plan is critically important as we start to talk about it because this is gonna feed into your financial plan. And feeding into your financial plan, you can't actually do a financial plan, which is required for funding, unless you do a staffing plan. Because it's such, for most businesses, staffing is actually quite a lot of money. And so investors are very, very keen on making sure that you have this down, right? So what a staffing plan does is it actually summarizes all your positions that you need. You're able to actually write job descriptions and other things from your staffing plan as well, which I actually really like. Our next one is risk and risk mitigation. And this is a really important section in my opinion, probably the most important uh, section, I think. What it basically covers is your potential threats in the future of your business. So this could be a physical threat, it could be market changes, it could be economic changes, uh, it could be anything that would threaten the business and investors wanna understand this. Now, you as an entrepreneur, you're like, I don't wanna talk about threats, I don't wanna talk about anything negative in my business plan. Actually, this is a really good thing to talk about because this gives you credibility. This says that you've actually thought through your business far enough and that you have a level of preparedness uh, that is gonna make your business work because every business has threats. So make sure that you embrace those threats and then you actually have a, mit a risk mitigation strategy for each one of your risks. When investors see that, they're like, okay, now I calm down, I understand there might be a risk, I calm down and make sure everything's okay. Our next component is key performance indicators or KPIs. And these are the specific metrics that measure the success of your business. And this is really important. They tend to go on, they go beyond financials. They, uh, and they also tend to be industry specific. So you've got to look inside, maybe do some research on what are the key performance indicators in your industry as well. They measure yourself against the competition. And that's why you have to look at the industry because competition is so very important. So there are things like conversion rates, maybe on an e-commerce site or in a retail store, sales per square foot, same store sales, and there are many different types of key performance indicators. Those are just a couple of them. And our final component is the startup plan. Startup plan is also very important because what it allows us to do is really understand all the startup costs that we need to do in order to get to revenue. And that's really important. Now, well, you say, wait a minute, all this information is already in my financials. Why do I need to do another plan for it? Because it's actually just a summary. Right now, all of that information is buried into your financials. So you want to bring that out. And the reason you want to do that is because investors really care about how are you going to get to revenue? How do we get to the first penny, first dollar of revenue? That's really important. So don't worry about it being redundant. It's a nice summary for investors. So this includes really big things such as like store build outs, building out your website, app development if you're a tech business, equipment that you need to be purchased. So these are big elements or items that are kind of grouped together. So think about that as you're working through your startup plan. Now, let's pull it all together now and understand how this works in a couple of businesses. So let's take a look at an example, Anytime Fitness. It's a 24 seven gym that sometimes has a staff there and available to you and sometimes it doesn't. You can go in anytime, day or night, and do your workout. I really like it because they really sell convenience, which is kind of interesting. So let's take a look at their execution strategy and see how they applied it. First of all, some milestones. What would they look at in terms of their milestone? Target date for expansion by state, because they have a lot of stores. Uh, membership and membership growth, very important for them as well. Major marketing initiatives would all make really good milestones for them. So in their staffing plan, I might include things like a staffing template because all their gyms, because their franchises are fairly the same, so having a staffing template for each, sta each gym would be great for them. Risk and risk mitigation. For, so for Anytime Fitness, what I would want to make sure that they do is address things like they're in a mature market. The, the, the gym market, the fitness market is huge with yoga studios, indoor cycling, rock climbing, all these other things, and then all the gyms they have to compete with as well. So what we want to make sure is they have a risk mitigation strategy in place as well and articulated very clearly on how they're going to combat that. 
KPIs. What are some of the KPIs for membership businesses like a gym? So number of new members, number of returning members, churn rate, all very important in which to track, all done by everybody in the fitness industry, especially gym owners as well. And finally, their startup plan. I would want to know things like how are they actually going to get these locations up and running? What equipment do they need to put in every location? How much is it going to cost? These are the things that I want to know in our startup plan. This is also very, very important. Other things that they can consider because it's unique to their business, things like location and facility plan. Every store is about 4,600 square feet. Uh, what does it mean to have self well-lit uh, locations, how I have to strategize for all of that becomes very important. What technology are you going to use? Security is very important. What payment systems are they going to use? What membership system are they going to use? Uh, also, how is that all going to work? And then equipment. How are they going to fund all that gym equipment and all the other things they need in order to get this thing started up? So you can start to see how an execution strategy starts to form with our standard components and some additional components that are really critical or specific to the individual business that they were talking about, in this case, Anytime Fitness. Let's take a look at one more example. I'm going to use a gaming company called Zynga, which actually most of you know. So what are some milestones for Zynga? Uh, new gaming releases, really important. How they release their products is very important to their overall strategy. Those are major milestones in any gaming or software company. Ad revenue growth, um, additional funding rounds, which also may be very important, especially for a technology company. Actually, raising money is a milestone in a lot of, uh, in a lot of businesses, especially a technology company. How about their staffing plan? Let's take a look at how they're going to recruit and retain talent. It's really important in the technology space, especially gaming developers are very hard to find. So what am I going to use and how many gamer, uh, gaming developers do I need? Uh, how about ramping up customer support, other things in the business? Risk and risk mitigation. How am I going to outpace all these other social gaming platforms that are out there? Uh, huge risk. I mean, it's very competitive. Things move very quick, quickly. So there are a lot of risks in that business. And if you fall a little bit behind or stumble, you may never recover. So you've got to mitigate those risks as well. KPIs. KPIs would include things like revenue from ads because that's their main form of revenue, including user signups is also important, number of social followers, engagement. These are all the things that a software company like a Zynga would actually uh, track. And finally, the startup plan for Zynga, in which we would need to know all the things it's going to take to launch that first game. That's what's going to be really important. And that might take a lot of revenue, a lot of investment, but we've got to know exactly what it's going to take, how long it's going to take to get that first game in the market and make it a hit. Some additional components to have in the execution strategy for Zynga. First, technology. Uh, what technology platform am I going to use? How is this going to be coded? Very important. Innovation. What differentiates my gaming platform from another gaming platform? And am I going to have any patents or intellectual property? If we can include that in the execution plan because we need to file all of that, that can be very, very compelling for an investor. And then strategic alliances, things like what direct relationships, what media partners, what other social platforms do I need to be connected with in order to make my business even work at all. Strategic alliances, if they're critical to the formation of your business, you absolutely have to include them in your execution strategy. Why is having an execution strategy so important to you? Well, your execution strategy is where the rubber hits the road. This is where it all happens. This is what makes or breaks a business. So I think that it's incredibly important for you, forget investors, forget everybody else, for you to have a great execution strategy and really focus in on this. First of all, it gives you a template for your business planning and you really need that template. This is gonna give you all the things that you need in order to put that business together. I always believe that better plans gives you better outcome and I think that's really critical as well. I suggest, you know, it's kind of like measure twice and cut once. This is where the execution strategy comes into play here. Now, it also helps you figure out the structure of your business overall. What are the key components that you need? How are you going to staff it? What are the workflows and internal dependencies that this all works from? Uh, who owns uh, the responsibility, which I think is also very important. Uh, what partnerships and relationships do you have to have in place in order to make this thing work, like supply chain partners or technology vendors? Also, what contingencies do you need to anticipate proactively uh, as you go out there uh, and start to execute? And as I said before, and I'll say again, that your execution strategy is linked to your overall financials, and so this is critical. If you don't have an execution strategy, you actually can't build financials, and everything in your business is actually found the foundation uh, for which your entire business runs from is your financials. And you've got to have a defensible financial plan in order to get funded. And that's really critical to the overall process. So why do investors care about your execution plan? Well, they need enough detail in order to know what's going on, in order to know that you know what you're doing, but they don't want to get buried in the weeds, like I've said, so make sure it's at the right level. But they do want that, that they want enough detail in order to make that judgment call for you. 
Also, this is all tied to very important financial things like major milestones, funding events. Uh, when are you going to be self-sufficient that you don't need any more funding? What is your break-even point, as an example? Uh, what are the key initiatives for funding or refunding or reinvesting your profits back into the business? Also, it gives credibility. Credibility is really important when you're dealing with investors. So the idea that you've thought through all of this and everything is internally consistent, everything kind of fits together in terms of your financial plan, your product roadmap, your key success factors. They look at all of that and say, wow, this is all, this is all beginning to sound like a real business. That's what they're looking for in this. Your execution strategy is where the rubber hits the road. These are those concrete steps that you need to execute in order to get your business up and running. So let's go and nail these. I really hope you found this video valuable. Now, the best conversations start with you, so make sure that you leave a comment, a question, or maybe a takeaway that you got from watching this video. And you're not only gonna help yourself, but other entrepreneurs as well. We're adding new videos all the time, so make sure you subscribe to our channel and get access to all this great content that will help you build your business. Oh yeah, make sure that you also share this video with a friend because they can benefit from it too. Be sure to visit entrepreneurnow.com to subscribe to our newsletter, Launch. Now, you'll get exclusive access to articles, free videos, interviews with world-class entrepreneurs, access to our live events, and insider tips that you can't get anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Entrepreneur Now TV. If you want help with making your business a huge success, then go to entrepreneurnow.com and learn from successful entrepreneurs that will take you step-by-step -step through the process of creating and growing your business. Whether you need help with things like a business or financial plan, your overall business strategy, tactical marketing and sales execution, or obtaining financing, we will be right there every step of the way to help you. Every entrepreneur I know benefits from having someone right there as they launch and grow their business. So we provide one-on-one -on -one and group mentoring to all our members. In addition, our members get access to on-demand videos, all our live events, financial planning tools, and a library of worksheets and resources at their fingertips. And the best part of all is you're part of a community of entrepreneurs that learn and inspire each other. So now is the time for you to take action. Go to entrepreneurnow.com and join us today. You can tell that beautifully designed is so important to their target market. There's no GMO, there's no sugar, it's gluten free, it's this free, that free, everything free. And we actually start to segment down from the industry until we actually get to our core market, which is really where our sweet spot is.